So the reason you're getting dense is very simple. As your plastisol cools inside the mold, it shrinks. Just kind of a natural occurrence. Anything that gets hot, when it gets cool, it shrinks. Hot, expand, cool, shrink. Simple. And as it's cooling and shrinking, it's attempting to draw in more plastisol from different areas of the bait and kind of keep the shape. That's what it wants to do, but something is preventing it from doing that. We're gonna go over the causes of that, differences between air bubbles and dents, how to fix them if you're designing a mold, and how to potentially prevent them if you have a mold that someone else designed for you. Let's go. All right, let's quickly cover the difference between a dent and an air bubble or an air pocket, because I see this getting confused every once in a while. An air pocket will have a very, very smooth um, surface. You won't have any texture on it at all from your mold. And it's uh, generally kind of uh, roundish, I guess you would say, right? Uh, so you can see by these here, you know, there's some little ones here, there's some bigger ones in these paddle tails. We'll cover how to fix that in a future video, by the way. But they have a distinctly different look than a dent. If you look at this lure with uh, a dent in it, you can see the texture of the bait, the scale pattern, etc., is all around the dent. It's not uh, smooth at all, and it's just kind of caved in there or dented, right? And I want to make that distinction because I see a lot of people posting like, I got these dents, and they're posting about air bubbles, and that's a completely different set of problems than fixing dents. Okay, let's talk about specifically the areas where you get dents in a lure design, or I guess I should say design choices that lead to more dents than not. If you have a bait that has relatively uniform size and shape throughout the entire length of the lure, you will get far less denting to even no denting, right? So think of a stick bait, for example, a uh, paddle tail uh, that kind of you know starts relatively large maybe gets a little bit larger and then tapers towards the tail you'll get far less denting in that bait than you will in something that has you know kind of a small area to a large area to then a small area any kind of major variations can lead to denting um, just because there's well we'll get into that in a second so you want to think about that when you're designing a lure, right? There's a reason you don't see a lot of baits that are, you know, super small in the front and then get big in the back. Um, they, they just, they're difficult to shoot without denting. I'd say maybe impossible. So when you're designing your bait, think about that uh, kind of um, size, shape parameters there, right? Uh, it's easier to make skinnier baits than it is to make kind of s thinner circular, whoa, bro, <laughs> thinner circular areas. Uh, that lead to bigger areas. The next place to look at if you're designing the lure yourself is the gate. And the gate is the part between the sprue, which is where you know your main plastisol gets injected, and the lure body itself. Usually there's a little connection and that's called a gate. By far the most common reason if you are designing your own lure that you get dense is that your gate is too small. So what happens as the, the plastisol is cooling, right? The thicker areas are gonna cool slower because they just have more plastisol and therefore more heat than the thinner, narrower areas. So what's happening inside of this mold after you inject it is the plastisol starts to cool. You have your sprue out here, which is reasonably large size, probably not solidified all the way. Your inside of your bait, the big part, is not cooled all the way, hasn't solidified. But this gate, if you made it too small, it's actually cooled all the way closed and it shut off all of the plastisol that potentially gets sucked in from the sprue into your body. The body then shrinks, collapses on itself and you get a dent. So the first thing you should do if you're getting dents consistently is see if you can open up that gate a bit. Even a little bit helps, you know, one, two millimeters here and there. Uh, this is by the way, why you don't see a lot of baits with very soft plastics, at least with very, very small noses. Here's a Berkeley bait, a crappie bait, that literally every single one of them has a dent in it. And you can tell why pretty easily. The sprue here is very, very small. You can see the remnants of it. And uh, that's, it's just gonna dent every time. By the way, Berkeley doesn't care, so maybe you shouldn't care. But that's a whole nother topic that I'll rant on in a future video. But this bait's just gonna dent because there's so much plastic inside compared to the size of the gate here that it's gonna shrink and the gate is going to close before it's done. Pretty simple. So step one, 
see if you can get that gate open a little bit further, right? Maybe you have a little more to cut off on your lure, but you're not worried about denting there. So the next area to look at is the sprue itself. And I see a lot of people start with this area, right? You see people put on sprue extenders and um, to try to extend the sprue to get more hot plastisol in there. And that can work. Uh, the size of your sprue is uh, somewhat important here, right? You wanna make sure that it doesn't solidify before the inside of your bait solidifies. I'm sure there's some magic math here, but you typically want the sprue to be as large, if not larger than the body of your bait. So if you have a 12 millimeter wide, you know, roughly, what is that, half an inch, maybe? Yeah, half an inch-ish wide soft plastic, you want your sprue to be pretty close to that size, right? Give or take, um, you know, maybe you can give it 10 millimeters, maybe nine, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's a, there is a interplay, by the way, between the sprue and the gate. Um, so, you know, everything is variable here, but expanding the sprue is kind of your next area to look at. And a quick tip on how you can kind of figure out if it's the sprue or the gate is after you inject the mold, and you're, you top off the sprue, if the sprue continues to collapse um, as it's you know sucking in more plastisol into the cavity, that's a good indication, uh, and you're getting dense by the way, uh, that's a good indication that you need to make your sprue bigger because your gate is fine because it's sucking in the plastisol there, but the sprue is actually running low on plastic. So if you're continually having to top off a sprue, a sprue extender might work, or again, if you're designing the mold yourself, making that sprue bigger. So last thing you can try, and I don't have a lot of good evidence in that, but I see a lot of mold designs with kind of a, the gate actually has like a big ball or a big reservoir uh, between the sprue and the, the smaller gate that enters into the bait. Um, you can see this is an example of one that I was uh, shown before. I, I don't know if this actually helps. I think the theory is, is that this big hot reservoir of plastisol provides enough heat to keep the smaller gate uh, moving freely. Um, just in my head, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but hey, that's another thing you can try if you're having this problem. Those are the design things to keep in mind, but what if you have a, a mold that someone made for you that is always denting? Again, as I mentioned, the reason it dents in the first place is the hot plastisol, it has is expanded state as it's hot and it shrinks as it cools. So by far the most common fix is to get the temperature of your plastisol lower. If it's lower, it's less expanded and it will cool faster. Um, and the, uh, you know, the sprue and the gate might have a chance to not solidify by the time the body has solidified as well. So that is the first thing to try, right? So if you're shooting it at 330 Fahrenheit, you know, try to shoot it at 310, 315, kind of as low as you can go and um, get that temperature down, that's gonna help equalize it. The next thing you can try to do is heat up your mold. This is uh, especially true if you notice that it dents less the more often you shoot it or the more times in a row you shoot it, right? The later, the later shots have less denting. Uh, if you heat the mold, then it can potentially have the gate not solidify as fast as the body of the mold and allow it to suck in more plastisol that way. Uh, it'd be great if you could just heat the gate. Um, you know, maybe you can hit it with a torch or something. I've never actually tried that, but keeping it warmer longer can help. And the last thing to try is kind of holding pressure longer on the shoot. So what I mean by that is as you're pressing down on your plunger, just kind of hold it in that state. Don't, don't keep smashing down with pressure because that'll lead to a lot of uh, flashing and stuff, but just kind of hold it there. That keeps hot plastisol kind of coming in, keeps everything kind of pushed out and pressurized, if you will, and can solve that problem. Uh, but it's not an ideal solution because you, you don't want to be doing that every time you shoot that bait, uh, especially if you want to make a bunch, you know, holding it there for 30 seconds, 25 seconds, not good. So shoot it colder, heat the mold up and hold pressure. Those are the three biggest takeaways there. You know, if you're buying a mold from pretty much any rep reputable mold manufacturer, uh, you know, Angling AI, Epic Bait Molds, uh, do it, you know, kind of those class, if you will, they're not going to sell a mold that dents every time. Um, I'm pretty comfortable in that statement, right? Those, those people know what they're doing. Uh, they've made molds for years, decades in some case, cases, and they're not gonna 
typically put out a product that is um, not gonna work correctly. So you can ask them, maybe they have some ideas, but typically speaking, those are the three things you're gonna wanna do. They're not gonna give you, changing their mold is not gonna really make much of a difference. Which leads me to the fourth and most radical solution is to make those mold modifications yourself, right? Open up the gate. Again, the gate is primarily the cause of these dents in a mold design. And, uh, you know, get in there with a file or something, um, maybe a Dremel, aluminum's pretty soft, and just kind of gouge out more space there. So those are all the tips I have, guys. If you have any more tips, please leave them in the comments below. That's how we all learn, man. Take care, tie lines.